Good day fellow investors. Now I have been mentioning here and there that I think real estate even now is a great risk reward investment. However, a lot of the comments are what if interest rates go up? What if real estate prices fall? And that's the key reason behind this video. There is a huge difference between investing in real estate and speculating in real estate. When investing, you look at what is your investment and what is your return on investment coming from the cash flows from the real estate and so on. When you speculate, you look at current real estate prices and then hope that it will go up 5, 10, 20 percent in the next few years. Then what are you going to do? Sell or be afraid that it will fall? So it's a terrible way to look at real estate and I think the speculation part, the behavioral part, really deters investors from looking at real estate now because real estate prices have surged in the past and it's immediately a bubble, don't invest. However, if you look at it from an investing perspective, you will see what are the benefits of diversifying your wealth, your portfolio with real estate. I'll first show a financial example of what does investing in real estate mean and then I'll go through five tips on how to find good real estate investments that I have applied to my investment and it works very well for now. Alright, finances. As we are value investors, we always look to find an investment that has a lot of value with a margin of safety so that we can't lose much but the upside remains unlimited. So that's the essence of a value investor. Now, if you take cash and if you invest in real estate, the return on that cash is small. However, I found extreme value in mortgages because of their extremely low historical interest rates. Interest rates haven't been so low in the past 500 years. So as value investors, we should take advantage of the historically low mortgages. Now, I know the question will be, what happens if interest rates r rise? Your mortgage will be fixed and your tenant rents will rise. Or, or even if real estate prices fall because of higher interest rates, the rent the tenants are paying will remain the same because it will always be in relation to uh, the yield on investment. So higher interest rates, it means also higher rent yields on the price. So you are always covered there. Your main concern as an investor is to cover for the mortgage payments. That's it. So if you find an investment, a real estate property that has sufficient cash flows to cover for the mortgage payments over the long term, then you are set. Then that's a good investment and that will lead to amazing returns in the long term with low risk. No matter what happens in the short time with real estate prices, no matter what happens with interest rates, no matter what happens with inflation. So you try to protect yourself first, as always. If I look at current mortgage rates for an investment property, they are around 4%, 4.5% in Europe, 4% in the US, so extremely low. So the point is to find real estate properties that will cover for both the repayment of the principal and the interest rate. Thus, we are looking somewhere at the 5.56% yield from real estate, which is very possible. If I look at the median price in Boston is 561,000, while the median rent is 2,700, which is a 5.7% yield, which is enough to cover a 4% mortgage with a 20% down payment. So let's look at the finances. To buy the median price in Boston of $561,400, you need a mortgage of $450,000 with a 20% down payment of $112,000. At 4% fixed interest rate, 30-year mortgage, the payment would be around $2,150, which is lower than the $2,700. Let's estimate there are some additional costs you have to cover for the vacancy months that will inevitably come here and there, refurbishment. So let's say you don't even make a cent per month on the investment. In 40 years, you just repay your mortgage. So you invested 112000 as a down payment and after 30 years, even if home prices don't move, don't go anywhere, you get 
a 561,000 property, 100% owned. So the investment is just north of 5% per year, which is not bad. Now let's imagine that real estate prices double in the next 30 years. Will they double? Well, if inflation is around 2%, then you can expect real estate prices to double in the next 30 years. That's the minimum. If there will be higher inflation, which is a possibility, I'm talking about three decades here, and in the three decades you still get your fixed mortgage rate. So if real estate prices double in the next 30 years, the 560,000 home in Boston becomes a 1.1 million home in Boston, while your mortgage payment is still the same, and it becomes an 8% return over 30 years. And this not even calculating the increases in rent alongside inflation. The funny thing is that after 30 years, let's say rent also doubles, then you get a 64,800 rent income per year or a yearly 54% return on your down payment. This is how investing in real estate works. I don't care what will happen with prices in the next few months in the next year. All I care is that I have tenants in my apartment that pay for part or most of my mortgage. So that's investing, that's it. Let's go on the five tips that I want to share with you that might make you find it easier to invest in real estate. The first thing, there is a difference between investing in real estate and stocks. Because when you invest in stocks, most of your competition is from speculators. Everybody looks at prices go up and down, prices are very volatile. When you invest in real estate, your competition comes from people that buy their homes to live. Thus, it is very interesting how that works. When prices go up, they rush to buy in fear that prices don't go higher. When prices fall, real estate prices fall, everybody is scared to buy because they are in fear of buying and seeing prices go even lower. Because even these people that are concerned in buying their home are always speculators. Everybody loves speculating in real estate. So take advantage of their behavioral fallacies, running into a hot market and going away from a falling market when foreclosures make those who took too high mortgages sell. So when you can buy in foreclosures, really look and dig deep into that because you might find real bargains. Secondly, and the most important thing with real estate, which is today very difficult to find with stocks, real estate still have a moat. You cannot increase the number of apartments in historical town centers. You cannot increase the number of beachfront properties in that cool area that you, everybody likes. So a lot of real estate has really a moat and that's what you need to look when investing in real estate. Don't look at hot trendy spots or something like that. Look at real estate with a moat where the rent will cover your mortgage rate. Even if it's a little bit more expensive than the cheapest real estate there with the highest yield, look for real estates with a moat. Old houses that cannot be destroyed, old neighborhoods that have to look like that for the next 200 years will always have their appeal because those can be replicated and demand will grow, grow, grow. So you have fixed supply and growth in demand. The best investment opportunity there is. Always look for a moat. Number three, stocks, we like to see a bit what's going on, invest, put our money, see what happens, take our money out and, and then redo the same process. With real estate, you have to invest a lot of time in the beginning, a lot of time in research. You have to turn around 500,000 real estates to find a few interesting properties on which you will make an offer. And then on that offer, perhaps one will be accepted because your offer will be ridiculously low. That's how you invest in real estate. And then you have to, okay, manage. So you have to put some effort constantly over the long time, but there is no more excitement. However, people usually look at two free real estate properties and then they invest. I, when I bought my last real estate properties for one year, I have looked approximately at 50, 60 real estate properties per day online. And then me and my wife, thankfully she was 
helping with that, we looked at about 10 properties per week for about eight months. And we found three, we made three offers. One was, to my surprise, accepted. And that's how we found our real estate bargain. So really dig into research before buying. Learn about the market, learn everything you can know about the specific local market where you think there is a mode, a long-term mode, and where the rent covers your mortgage. Then you are really investing for the long term. You buy once and you forget about it for the next 50 years. Number four, what I showed you about Boston there were median prices. And as we have learned in our video about Extremistan and Mediocristan, the median statistic is made of large differences. There are different prices, different real estate properties. So really try to distance yourself from the median by buying below the median price with a higher rent. Always with the moat and everything. With a lot of effort, you can save yourself a little bit of capital in the beginning and have a higher yield, a higher rent. There are some kinds of properties that yield better yields or give more stability and so on and so that's all you will research if you follow the previous tip so the more research you do you really have to be an expert on the area you are researching in. you need a few months to become an expert but it is worth it you will see later why just on a financial example let's say we lower the price of the property from 560,000 in Boston to 500,000 and we find it with a higher rent of 3000 Now the monthly payment for the mortgage is 1900 and the rent is 1100 above that. Thus, and when we add the cost, we might even get a $500 per month cash return on the investment or 6% on the down payment. Add the 6% on the already above mentioned inflationary 8%, which is really to be expected that house prices double in the next 30 years, and you find yourself with a 14% annual return. That will probably only increase with higher rents. So 14% return from real estate with, let's say, low risk. I find it one of the best opportunities the current market offers. However, you really have to put a lot of effort into investing in such a thing. It takes, uh, as I said, research, maintenance, landlording, tenants, and everything involved with that. However, it really pays. With a small down payment, you can provide yourself passive income for the rest of your life. So really think about it. Number five to conclude, don't speculate with real estate. You hear a lot of stories of people that speculated with real estate. Some do good, some do, get, do bad. But when you invest in real estate, that's a completely different story. Don't take credit card debt to pay for the down payment. That's crazy and that's speculating. Always keep a margin of safety so that no matter what happens, you can always pay the mortgage, even if the vacancy is a little bit longer than the average expected in the area. So really think about lowering your risk, keep your risk low and leaving that as an investment for the very, very long term. If you can reach a return of 14, 15%, it is much better than any stock will ever offer you. And with the current low mortgage rates, it is really possible to reach such a return. I'm talking about 14% per year growing alongside the growing rents and fixed costs over the next 50 years. So imagine what would a part of your portfolio de-risk because it's in real estate returning 15% per year due to your financial well-being in comparison to what you are doing now or what you have been doing in the last 2, 3, 5, 10 years with stocks depending on how much you are investing. That's my message for today. Really think about diversification. That doesn't have to happen now as you are probably following this channel and you will make a lot of money on stocks in the next year, 2, 3 years. You can also diversify when you have enough for a down payment. However, I would really advise to diversify from stocks when you make a lot of money on stocks into something stable that will bring you yield, a cash flow and passive income. Because you never know what can happen to stocks. And even if stocks double in the next three years, 
you can lose 80% like that in a market crisis. And I'm really looking forward to the comments about speculating and investing. How do you feel about investing in real estate if stock prices fall, let's say, in the next two, three years? And do you think that that fear of stock pro of real estate prices falling, sorry, hinders you in making investment diversified, rational decisions for your portfolio? Thank you, I'll see you in the next video.